episode of Search It Up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different types of movies and TV shows, and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about, drumroll please, Night at the Museum! I'm so excited! And I am so honored to be talking to Patrick Gallagher, who plays Attila the Hun in all three of the Night at the Museum movies. Night at the Museum is the first in a trilogy of movies in which Ben Stiller stars as Night Watchman Larry at the Museum of Natural History. But little does he know, it's not as simple as he thought. He learns that the secret Egyptian stone brings everything to life at night. And I mean everything. There's a monkey that they keep slapping faces. Or there's a big giant dinosaur that's all made of bones just walking around. And then you have all these historical characters riding on horses and battling it out and trying to kill him. But anyways, they learned that the security guards that gave Larry, Ben Stiller, the job at the beginning are actually evil and are trying to take the stone. And then it would stop all life at the museum. So Larry uses the help of his new friends to stop them. And the chaos doesn't end after that. In the second and third movie, they travel to Washington, D.C. and London. These movies have such an incredible cast of characters which I talk about and more in my interview with Patrick Gallagher. In addition to Night at the Museum, Night at the Museum Battle of the Smithsonian, and Night at the Museum, The Secret of the Tomb, Patrick has worked on Christmas Chronicles Part 2, Glee, A Dog's Way Home, American Princess, Fortunate Son, Big Sky, I Zombie, and so many more movies and TV shows. How did you get the role on Night at the Museum? Did you audition specific, um, specifically for the role of Attila the Hun? Or was it like more like a general? I auditioned specifically for the role of Attila. Um, it was a little complicated because I was up here in Vancouver. I'm up here right now shooting the TV show. So I was up here for the callback part of it. And when I first auditioned for it, it was actually still written in English. I had some kind of weird line like, go get me doom now. Yeah. And that was the original audition. So what we do is we'll audition and then we'll get callbacks if yeah. they're interested. So then to the callback, I was up here and Sean Levy, the director was in the room and I did it. And he said something like, well, I'm gonna do my Sean Levy imitation here. Well, we're thinking of going a different direction with him. We're not sure. We're thinking of maybe it's hard to explain some kind of, maybe it made up language. And I went, you want, you want evil dictator language circa 1350? And he went, yes. I said, okay. So I just made something up and then got it. And then we just sort of made it up as we went along. So yeah, so I auditioned for it. I was really surprised to get it, to be honest with you. Um, That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and I don't, think um, you were, I don't even think you were born yet. Um, I don't think, I think the first movie probably came out before I was born, but like yeah. the second and third, I think. The second one I think came out the year I was born and the third one came out like I was already like alive. You know how long ago it was? The first one came out before there were iPhones. They gave, us, they gave us flip phones to, because they always give us phones when you're traveling. They used to before we had great cell phone plans and they gave uh -huh. us flip phones. <laughs> That's was. so funny. And how much freedom did you have um, with Attila the Hun, your character? Like, he's so funny and he has so many like memorable quirks. And were those all scripted or did you get a chance to like freely develop the character while you were filming? Like, did you get to make up some of the lines? Well, I think that's what was so great about it. Honestly, I made up almost all of it. Um, oh, the, really? language I, the language I made up as we went along, um, as it went along, we developed more and more. Most, some of those scenes weren't even in it. And that's what was so satisfying for me. And, and I was so happy that, you know, the director, Sean, gave me so much trust and ability. Yeah, I just made the language up literally on the spot. Yeah. And I did some work on it and then got into a rhythm. And for example, that last scene where we were yelling, if I remember correctly, I think the only note was come together and yell and we'll just figure it out. The whole magic scene was all improv. Mm -hmm. That whole thing about Maggi Soso, I just kind of came up with. So oh, that's what was so much fun about it. Like, and it got to the point where on the third one, it would just be okay, go do your thing. 
and we'll and and it wasn't just me it was a lot of it that's what was so amazing about working with all those incredible incredibly talented artists like Robin Williams and Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson and Ricky Gervais a lot of that movie was improv mm -hmm. and we would do something called another reverse turnaround so I don't know if you know how things shoot usually you'll shoot a master of everybody and then you'll shoot one person the other person and that's <laughs> called coverage yeah but they had this special term I think it was extra turnaround because somebody would improv something while someone else is being filmed that would be so funny they'd have to go back and say okay we've got to go shoot that now <laughs> but yeah masters like Robin Williams and Ben Stiller and all these guys just creating stuff so that's what was so fun about it I'd say roughly 20 percent of that movie maybe 30 percent was improv wow that's a lot that sounds yeah, and really it, cool and it's fun to work it's fun to work that way you know it yeah. really is what sort of research should you have to do um, for your character? That's a good question. Well, you know, I think that was the first time I'd ever done sequels. And you're right. By the time we got to two and especially three, you know, there were big gaps in, in, in year gaps, years gaps in, in doing them. But it felt like we had just like we just picked up where we left off. Uh -huh. You know, we, we were all aware of our roles. We were all aware of what we were doing. We were all aware of what our responsibilities were. Um, and it really was a sense of ensemble, which, you know, was sort of, the tone was set by Sean and how he worked. It did feel like we were all part of a team in that movie, especially the third one, because we were always there all the time. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of research, I mean, let's be honest, I should have been Genghis Khan. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, everyone calls me Genghis Khan. So I did some research into it. And when, when we got to the point where we were going to do the gibberish language, I don't like the term gibberish because gibberish implies that it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. I was always thinking in English. I would just let the words come out however they came out. So it was almost like, so, and I think one of the best compliments I ever got is they showed the first one to the test audience and, and the director again said to me, no one here at all said they didn't understand what you were saying. Because I was always thinking about what my intention was. I would just use a different language. And yeah. it, here's a little inside information. There's a few bad swear words in there that I threw in somewhere. <laughs> and stuff like I'd ask people where their grandmother was born and they'd give me some small town in Europe and I would throw in baktaka. I threw in <laughs> cream donuts just for fun. So, That's funny. Um, now, when we did the language in the first one, I did want to hear whether the new language whether Mongolian was more tone-based, like, for example, the Chinese languages are more sort of word-based, like mm -hmm. Japanese and Korean, and it was sounded more word-based. So in the first one, there's a scene that they cut out where we're supposed to be getting Carla Gugina's character out of her apartment in New York, and the line was, I could burn her out. And I find this so cute now. I did all this research to find the Mongolian word for fire and arrow and wrote it all down and memorized it. Um, and then eventually I just started making it up as we went along. Uh -huh. But yeah, so I did do try to figure out the sound of it. But because it was a cart, sort of a, a comedic version of Attila, there wasn't that much research that needs to be done as if you're doing historical. Yeah. I just tried to make him funny and likable. Mm -hmm. so. Out of all the three movies, which one do you think like showed us a lot of history? Well, I think the great thing is they all sort of do because they're all taking place in museums. So hopefully people would, even if we're not putting it directly into the story, you know, yeah. hopefully people get interested and go, well, who was Sacagawea or who was Teddy Roosevelt or, yeah. you know, and I, I think that, that that probably hopefully happened. I know that more people started going to the museum. So. Yeah. Definitely, because when I first saw the night at the museum, um, I I knew like all the character, but I never really heard of Attila the Hun actually. And I looked him up, and I thought he was like really cool and stuff. And then I got to learn about him. Well, thank you. and it is kind of cool. Although honestly, I'm probably more Genghis Khan. <laughs> Should have been Genghis Khan. I look like Genghis Khan. Everyone looks, <laughs> everyone calls me Genghis Khan, but I think they wanted to rhyme Attila the Hun Hun with "You better run, dum dum." <laughs> So, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, they, they were, um, it was so long ago, mm -hmm. so much running that costume was so heavy and so hot. I don't think I could do it now, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm 14 years older. Mm -hmm. Like I, that, that scene in the first one running, running, running after him when he goes in the elevator, we had oh, to do yeah. that, we had to do that 12 times. 
And that cost me was 40 pounds of real yak fur. I couldn't do it. I would would just roll up into a a whimpering ball in the corner going, I don't want to anymore. (laughs) So. Um, Do you have a favorite scene or character other than your role? You know, anything Robin did. Robin Williams was just an incredible human being and so generous as an actor. Um, You know, I was a little bit nervous in the first one because it was a long time ago. I hadn't done all that much and I didn't know what I'm supposed to be doing and we're making his language up and I was a little freaked out. And I remember I did something and he came up to me afterwards and I know he did this on purpose. Mm -hmm. He said that was really funny because he knew that I would go, if Robin Williams thinks I'm funny, I must be doing okay. And from that point on, I felt better about it. Um, so anything he did was one of my favorite parts yeah. of it. You know, I mean, you know, the, the goodbyes in, in, in part three were sort of mean a lot to me because you know, we'd all spent so much time together. A lot of those were real. I mean, I remember the last couple of days on set when we knew it was all done, we're, we're quite sad, actually. And like you mentioned, Robin Williams, um, he- what was your experience working with him, um, the late Robin Williams? Because he's such a legend. He's so funny. What was it like, like interacting with him? I know you shared one memory, but do you have any others? Yeah, he, well, I mean, he's just such a wonderful human being. He was just so kind and so low key and then just be so brilliant. You know, some of my favorite times were, especially when Ricky Gervais was there and Ben Stiller. I remember in the second one, I just wanted him to call cut. So I could watch these three guys talk to each other. <laughs> but here's a great story. My niece, she came in to visit me on set. I think she was five. Mm-hmm. And she just said, I'm hungry. And Robin Williams, multi-award, Academy Award winning Robin Williams, went to the craft table where we have all the food and got her a muffin. <gasps> and there's this great picture of my five-year-old niece smiling beside this Oscar winner holding the muffin that he went and got her from craft services. <laughs> So well, that's that's, so funny. that's kind of that's kind of a Rob, really nice Robin Williams story. Definitely. And um, what was the most challenging um to film? Which of the movies? Um, the first one, the second, or the third? For me, the first one because it was all brand new, and we were just trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out how to do something like this. Um, I was a little bit nervous, which you know you always are at first. You're trying to prove yourself. You want to you want to make sure you're doing a good job. But because we were creating the language, we were trying to figure out what was going on. Um, to me, that was the most challenging. I mean, it was physically challenging, but it was also incredibly rewarding and fun. But yeah, that was tough. Because once you get to the second one, mm-hmm. like I said, everyone's familiar. You know how to work with the director. And I knew what I was doing by that point, theoretically, hopefully. Um, <laughs> first one was was tough. Uh-huh. I can see, yeah, I can see how that would be pr- pretty tough because you don't yeah. know your character yet. You kind of get it, have to get used to the character. and Yeah, and I had a small part and then I'm trying to manage all the sort of sense of getting a bigger part in this huge movie and how do you do that? I mean, there's a <laughs> lot to being an actor. You know, you, there's a lot of ways of, of operating on set. Um, One of the nice things was too that I grew up in Vancouver. So, you know, we shot all three of them up here. So it was always nice to be home. Yeah, that's it's a nice to be home. Yeah, and staying in a hotel and not my sister's couch. It's like I don't <laughs> need the couch. I, I'm at a hotel, thank you. But yeah, it was fun. Uh huh. And um, what what was your favorite of the three nights in the museum film? That's like trying to ask me who my favorite child would be if I had kids. <laughs> I can't answer that. Well, <laughs> I guess maybe the first one, just because it was. You know, it was the first one and it was the one that started it all and it was so exciting. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I love all of them so much. I love them like at the same level, but like I'd probably choose number one too. Yeah, I mean, I like three um, as well because we got to go to London. Um, Yeah, we watched three recently and it was really good. Yeah, and that goodbye scene I created too. So I was happy about that. Yeah. Where I Um, spoke one word of English. That was my idea. (laughs) Really? I said friend. Yeah, I just sort of brought it up one day and he's like, love it. That was good. The director had this sort of joke that, you know, he called it the Gallagher something, the Gallagher way of working. And I said, what's that? He said, well, you would have five terrible ideas, but I knew the sixth one would be brilliant. So I just let (laughs) him keep coming. And that's what you have to do when you're acting is, you know, you got to be, and that's what was so great about the atmosphere is he just let us try things. And if it didn't work, it's no big deal. Yeah. You know, 
doesn't make you feel stupid because you need to try ideas and they're not all going to be good mm -hmm. but eventually you're going to come up with something that works and when you work in an environment where you feel free to just be creative yeah. and not be afraid of that that's that's really rewarding yeah that definitely sounds like a lot of fun and um what was it like, what was it like working with a monkey i mean i love um dexter he seems like so funny and um what was it like working monkey pooped on me so really? i don't know yeah, and i saved his life and it still pooped on me <laughs> in the second one we were running in the when we were running at the um at the end in the big battle oh yeah yeah I'll tell you a secret. It's a girl too. It's, her name's Crystal. Yeah. Yeah. But so she was on my shoulder and she fell off. And so then I yelled, stop, because I didn't want to get trampled. So I'm like, okay, I saved the monkey. And then the next one, she pooped down my shoulder. And I'm like, I just <laughs> saved your life. <laughs> and I, it was, it was, she was great, but it is true. You know, she stole all the scenes. Yeah. And Crystal was there. I was like, why am I even here? Everyone just wants to, <laughs> nobody cares about us. <laughs> but she was incredible. I mean, that was literally her doing all the window opening in the first one. Like she just learned how to do it. Wow. And yeah, like how she stole the key. Like one of my favorites is like with her is um in the beginning when um Ben Stiller's character is just figuring out all like his whole like what he his whole job and yeah. he, and she steals his keys and um and then like steals everything from him i thought that was really funny yeah and as far as i know that's all her which is incredible yeah you know that's that's, that's not that's not cgi so yeah but yeah everyone just you know once nobody cares about us once the monkey got there <laughs> yeah. um where did you film the movies um all the, Place like called, most of it most of the stuff was in a huge studio i think ooh, the night museum was one of the first ones to use it i think it was an old bicycle norco shop in uh, just outside of just on the outskirts of vancouver in the suburbs called mammoth Studios. so we shot all of that most of it was in there so they would just build these incredible sets in there yeah. but on the first one we did go to new york mm -hmm. and and the second one we went to new york i gotta tell you that was one of the coolest nights and the second one we landed to come back to the museum of natural history uh -huh. That was literally in front of the Museum of Natural History. Wow. So, I mean, that was one of my, I remember talking to the director saying this, when I was a little kid about your age daydreaming about being an actor, I daydreamed something like this. Uh -huh. Shut down a street in New York City in front of the Museum of Natural History with 500 people across the street in the park watching us, just going, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, so we, so we, so it was all, but the basis of it was in, in the studio in Vancouver. And then they would go on location to New York in the first one. I think they went to Washington, D.C. and New York in the second one. And then we went to London and New York in the third one, I believe. I love New York. I love going there. It's so much fun. Just, I always say, like, my two favorite times going to New York, I mean, I love going there for even a day. But is you either, stay, like, walk around really late at night or really early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, I we I, we went there for the premieres for Christmas, and I love being. I just love how busy it is. Yeah. I also love it because that's the only time I ever get to fly in like one of those first class pods. Is when you're <laughs> you know, so I've been I've been in a couple of first class pods because of that. So thank you, United Museum. <laughs> if you could go back in history, like at any point of time, um, what would you, what point of time would you go to, and who would you want to meet? Oh wow! One, do I get to come back? yes <laughs> do i and i don't can i bring my own food because that's a big thing like, i'm not going back to the middle ages when i'm eating like you know stuff that's not refrigerated you can bring one what like one like life supply of food but like it has to be only one food can i can i bring a rocky road bar yeah you can bring that wow but like you can only how long am i how long am i there for it depends. Um, well, I would say no less than a day. And do I lose the day here or do I get to come back to the, exactly the same point and nobody knows I ever left? Um, we could do it that way. Okay, we then I, wow. <laughs> you know what? I'd probably go way, way, way back in time just to see what it was actually like. Like, like I might go watch I might go watch the day they finished the pyramids. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Do I speak the language? Like, do I just show up and I get to speak ancient Egyptian or do I have to like hide and pretend and hopefully nobody finds? Can I ask directions? Do I just know everything? Um, no, you, I think it would be like, you would show up and nobody knows who you are. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, um, you know what? I would either go meet Shakespeare and watch a Shakespeare play, <laughs> or I would go somewhere way, way back in history, like literally watch them finish the day they finish the, um, the pyramids or something like that. Wow. <laughs> somewhere where I can't, because I want to go somewhere where, you know, we can go back and get pictures to maybe a hundred years ago and we can get sort of accurate pictures of what life was like, you know, even three, 400 years ago. But I want to go, I, if I could go, I'd go back thousands of years to see what life was really like back then. That's what yeah. I would do. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, yeah. And who Only would... if I could bring a Rocky Road bar though. Yes, you get to bring Rocky Road bar. And it has to be ice cream. So somehow you have to magically have ice cream show up in ancient Egypt for me. I've had, I've had Rocky Road ice cream before, but I've never tried a Rocky Road bar. That's it's the only... Like, I'm I'm dual citizen, Canadian and American, and one thing Canada has better than America is chocolate bars. America doesn't have very good candy bars. Except <laughs> Rocky Road is good. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, because Canada has all these British chocolate bars like Caramel and Mr. Big and O Henry, so we get all the Cadbury stuff, which oh. we don't get in the states. Mm -hmm. I've heard of. I may have tried like one Cadbury bar before, but I've definitely heard of them. But like a lot of people recommend them. Yeah, get a coffee crisp and a caramel milk and uh, dairy milk and Jersey milk and arrow <laughs> bars and Smarties. And, but I like Rocky Road ice cream. So as long as I have ice cream, I go to ancient Egypt. <laughs> well, yeah, you probably should. You can probably need ice cream too because it's yeah. like really hot there. Yeah, but it would be kind of cool to see like the premiere of Hamlet when it was first mm -hmm. done. Something like that would be kind of cool too. Yeah. And um, is there anybody like back a thousand years ago that you like, I mean, I don't know if we know a lot of people back a thousand years ago that you want to meet? I, I, I'd like, to, I'd love to meet Abraham Lincoln. Oh yeah, that would be yeah. a good someone to meet. I think that'd be a pretty good conversation. Yeah. Einstein, I wouldn't mind meeting. Well, isn't, um, um, in, I know in Night at the Museum too, isn't there like a, the statue of Abraham Lincoln? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that was Hank Azaria. So, but yeah, I, I, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to meet Shakespeare. I think. Yeah, that I think would be, be kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe meet Henry. Maybe meet Henry VIII. He was still young and not and not a complete meanie. <laughs> you know, because Henry VIII was kind of it was not so crazy until he got hurt. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's it. That's cool. And um, what are you working on right now? Uh, currently, I'm on a TV show called Big Sky on ABC's on Tuesday nights. I play Sheriff Walter Tubb. Um, <laughs> starts airing again. We have a new episode on Tuesday, January 26th. I've never so, seen yeah, it. I'm up it I'll check it out. Yeah, it might, be a, it might be a bit young. You should talk to your mom about that. Yeah. It's, a, it's on at 10 o'clock for a reason. So <laughs> get, your mom, get your mom or dad to check it out and see it's okay for you to watch it but there was christmas chronicles i just did ghost of tsushima last year with the video game for um playstation mm -hmm. and uh that's about it no i have i voice a little bit on guild war versus two mm -hmm. so that's, that's it. really cool i'm just happy to be working on big sky right now yeah and um, I th so I think you're, yeah. um, but you said you're like somewhere, um, you're shooting, so you're not at home, but um, you're based in the on the West Coast, right? Yeah, I live in Los Angeles, but I, you know, I grew up in Vancouver. I'm a dual citizen and I've done a lot of work up here recently. A lot of my work um, in the last few years has seemed to be up here. It goes in ways where work will be either in Los Angeles or Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did, I was up in Canada last year, last summer shooting the Canadian series for four months and then I've been up here since October shooting this so mm -hmm. but yeah. I, I'm usually based in Los Angeles yeah I love Los Angeles I've been out there multiple times and um, I know there's a lot of restaurants out there but um do you have you even like mm -hmm. not in a favorite restaurant in LA but even anywhere well I mean, I love Indian food. So there's a great Indian restaurant I love. One of the, when you go back to LA, there's this place called Top Round Roast Beef. 
which has the cool, it's a really cool little sort of drive up place um, right at La Brea and Olympic. And I remember driving by and it looked really cool. It was all orange and white. And I was like, please look as cool. Be as good as you, as, as you look cool. And the <laughs> roast beef is fantastic. It's melting your mouth. I'm not a big barbecue sauce fan, but this is sort of, they have really incredible sweet barbecue sauce. So there's a place called Top Round, which is great. There's also a place in uh, Los Angeles called Galanga Thai Fusion, which I love on Santa Monica. Oh, I also like In-N-Out Burger. I'm a big fan of In-N-Out Burger. Oh, I love In-N-Out Burger. And Wendy's Frosties, but there is only one Frosty. Don't ask me if I want a vanilla Frosty. That's just white goop. <laughs> hey, there's only one Frosty and it's chocolate. The rest is an abomination. <laughs> That's all I have to say about Frosties. Um, yeah, and at In-N-Out, when I, I usually do a single, but my dad usually gets a double double. But um, I usually get a single burger, like just the regular animal burger. style. Um, no, I don't get it. I've never tried oh. animal style. Actually, something. Um, I'm allergic to potatoes. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know what? Their fries aren't very. The only thing I don't like there is their fries. But get animal style because that's when they fry the onions up with the cheese and the onions. I've heard of it and it sounds really good. I get the single too because I lost 50 pounds over the lockdown. I lost oh, 50 yeah. pounds since May 1st by eating in and out burger once a month instead of once every couple of couple of couple of times a week. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I miss it. It's a, every time it's it's a tradition I have and I literally do it every time. The, as soon as I land in LA, I get home and the first thing I do is get in my car and get an in and out burger. Wow, every yeah. Every time we go out, we definitely, we at least try to go to In-N-Out Burger once. I love it so much that they finally came as far north as Medford. And if it wasn't for the quarantine, I would consider driving down to Medford to get In-N-Out Burger. That's how much I like In-N-Out Burger. Wow, yeah, I love yeah. In-N-Out Burger. I usually yeah. love getting um, like a regular burger and I also love to get like a pink lemonade too. Yeah, yeah, they have pretty good milkshakes. But yeah, those are my restaurants, but those are my favorites. Yeah, but do you have any restaurants like in Canada that you like to go to? Yeah, India Gate Cafe up here. I mean, there's a restaurant chain called White Spot that I'm partial to because I used to work there, but they have the best breakfast sandwich and a really good breakfast. I'm a big breakfast person. I, so love I, like, to find, I like to find places with really good breakfast. Yeah, every weekend my dad and I always go out for breakfast. I mean, when the, now it's getting colder out and like um, and like, we don't really want to eat inside, but um, it's, it's getting colder out. So we haven't been lit lately, but we, that's yeah. like our thing. We always go out to breakfast on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Always find a breakfast place and have it. You know, I, I can, I'll eat breakfast at three in the morning sometimes. That's what I order. So, yeah. but I've been doing a lot of restaurants cause you know, because of the, cause of COVID. So yeah. that's been kind of hard. I just eat takeout now. Cause I don't, you know, you have to be careful about things. So yeah. I haven't even been able to go to my favorite Indian restaurant up here because that's my favorite food is Indian food. Mm -hmm. I don't really like sushi that much, which is I, tough because Vancouver has apparently has amazing sushi and it's all over the place, but I'm just not a big fan. I like sushi, but like I, I don't have like the ones with the fish. I usually just, I get a California roll usually. Right. Um, yeah. I, I don't usually have the raw fish yet. Yeah, I just don't, I don't, I mean, it's all right, but you know, and kale by the way is not a food. You know that, right? what kale is a garnish I just <laughs> want to know that really no it's garnish you know what my first job was what i worked at burger king and they had a salad bar back in the 80s and you know what i used to do i used to walk around with a bag of kale and put it on the outside to make it look pretty and it literally said do not eat <laughs> it's a garnish it's not a food people <laughs> when you go to the grocery store and you see all that green stuff where the fish is yeah making it look pretty that's kale. It's a garnish. <laughs> don't tell me it's superfood. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Doesn't it's no it's just eat some spinach. Spinach is just as good. That's what I say. Yeah, I like spinach. Um, but um, do you have like any favorite snacks from craft services? Um, like when you're doing when you're um filming? Yeah, I'm a big donut fan. Oh, I love um, donuts. But you know what I like about it? That's I always try to get like a egg. Because I, I won't make this myself, uh, um, an egg salad or tuna sandwich always feels like it's, that's when I know I'm on set. Because the only place I ever get egg salad sandwiches is on sets. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of like donuts or croissants or something. I'm going to have to be careful because I want to make sure I loot, keep the weight off. But yeah, yeah I, favorite, I like donuts. Um, do what's your favorite type of donut? Uh, 
I like plain donuts, but I like a lot of chocolate stuff. I like, um, um, yeah, I like like just plain frosted, but I also really like the powdered sugar ones with the jelly inside. Yeah, those I did, but then you get powdered sugar all over you. And, yeah. You know, so I like the sugar ones. I like banana bread. Um, I, I love banana eat. bread. Um, yeah, I try to just sort of watch what I have on craft service. And they, they give us like hot food too, which is nice. Yeah. I ate a lot of cheese and in the museum because I had the beard on, they had to glue the beard on, I couldn't really chew. So all I could have from craft services were like thin slices of cheddar cheese or these little thin chocolates. And because I could just slide them in my mouth and like, <laughs> I couldn't chew. If I chewed, then the beard would start coming off. Oh. <laughs> I was limited in my craft services on night at museum. Yeah. Well, so. I, I had so much fun talking to you. Thank you so well, much. As for did me. I. I had a great time talking to you. You're very good at it. I'm sure that, you know, in 20 years, you'll be on major network television doing this, and hopefully I'll still have some kind of career and we can talk again. <laughs> yeah, talk definitely. On show. <laughs> you know, so when I call you saying, listen, Sienna, I need a little boost to my career. Remember this, okay? I will. Okay. Well, good luck with everything. Thank you. Okay. See you later. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you so much, Patrick. I had so much fun speaking to you about all different types of things. And now, before we search it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller were only on set together one day? Stiller talked to a toothpick for the Jebediah scenes, and Wilson filmed all of his parts three months later. And now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh! Owen Wilson was in all three of the Night at the Museum movies, and he was also in the movie Wonder. Well, see you next time to talk about Wonder.